Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Adrian Ross Show. I'm Adrian Ross, of course. And today I have a special, special guest on the show, known by some of you, I'm sure, and some of you will get to know him for the first time. The Pope B. Frank is on the Adrian Ross Show. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. Thank you for having me. How are you doing? I'm doing well, and it's my pleasure to have you on the show. First of all, I want to tell everyone that I haven't known you for a long, long, long time. But I encountered you on YouTube. And once I encountered you, I was hooked to your material, particularly your basketball mind, particularly, even more particularly, I should say, Caitlin Clark. So tell us a little bit about yourself and how you came to, to be putting together content surrounding a WNBA player, Caitlin Clark. Uh, well, thank you. Thank you. for. I'm glad you you enjoy watching and everything like that. So good thing to know. Uh, I came across Kaylin Clark from what was her junior year uh, versus the South Carolina Gamecocks. And she put up that 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 uh, masterful performance. Yes. Right. And then next followed up against Angel Reese and then seeing how that played out. But. Uh, really still didn't do no content on it. Mm -hmm. uh, content didn't come about until uh, really after her senior season. Mm -hmm. After her senior season and getting ready to go to the draft, she didn't broke the records and things like that. We had to start speaking on it. Uh, and, and Angel Reese as well. So it, it started, it took off from there. Yeah. It took off from there. Now, were you a WNBA or even a college women's basketball fan for many, many years? Not at all. Not at all. I, I have my certain players that I would like, like uh, Candace Parker, of course, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Lisa Leslie and, and those ladies uh, back in the days. Right. But no, no, not, not a fan of WNBA or women's basketball. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like they is more of a YMCA type of style of play. And <laughs> so that's why I was in, I was attracted to Kaylin Clark because her game is different, right? Mm -hmm. it, it's more so like how the men play with, 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 you know, how she move, how she move without the ball. She play real smart and she's a dog out there. So, mm -hmm. you know, I yeah. became a fan of her. Okay. And so you've been watching the season and you and I have been conversing. Uh, and so, I want you to just tell us, what are you noticing? Uh, I know how you feel about the league. You know, like you said, you like the more exciting. You like how she plays. You like the, the logo threes, right? How she right. moves the ball, et cetera. But you've been watching the league for a while. And, and, you know, Indiana Fever in particular, just be honest and tell us, what are you, what are you thinking? Is she living up to the hype? Is she not all that they said she was? What's up? Oh, Dang, that's a tough question. That's is she living up to the hype? Mm -hmm. Uh she is living up. It's they won't allow her to live up to the hype. Mm -hmm. Okay, say more. They, they won't allow her. So the WNBA it seems to be uh it seems to be getting in its own way. Mm -hmm. Uh I I don't know what it seems to be. Honestly, I'm I'm baffled by it. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with the WNBA. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't seem to uh, want Caitlin Clark to to shine uh, like the star that she is. Mm -hmm. So they go from even face guarding her, double teaming her, blitzing her in preseason games. They mm -hmm. go from, you know, cutting a, a two-time defensive player of the year who most likely has chemistry with Caitlin Clark. Uh, it, it's 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 really a it's a circus show. Mm -hmm. It's a circus show to WNBA. So yeah, I'm turned wow. off. You turned off. Yeah. Uh, I just recently did a live and I asked those who were in the chat. I said, I want you to come up with one word. So here's the English teacher in me. I said one word to describe what is going on with the, with Caitlin Clark, with her team, with that game against Seattle storm. And I'm telling you several people said, 
that what word comes to their minds when they think of all this is sabotage. And I know that you have talked a lot about that. I have not been one who's who wants to believe that people are trying to sabotage Caitlin Clark's success, Caitlin Clark's success. But you have said it and you're not alone. What makes you think that there's sabotage going on and why? Each. Well, that's that's a long window. I'm gonna try not to be too long winded on that. That's a, it because to really break it all down. Yeah. Um, the powers that be, it seems to me, you know, is I don't know. She's too big of a star. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. You know, honestly, it's sabotaging. Uh, it's, it seems like it's coming from every angle. It's coming from the top of the NBA to the WNBA. And reason being, again, I, I've been saying it over and over and over, but it, it sounds crazy to a lot of people. So it's playing out, though, to be such as why more people now they starting to see it and say, yeah, sabotage, sabotage. But, you know, I just think it's a, it's a, it's a powers that be thing that, that if you don't sell your soul to the game, it's a game within the game. Let's just say that. And mm. and Kaylin Clark isn't willing to play their game. So mm. they 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 wouldn't sabotage. Okay, so you've already told us that you weren't a WNBA fan. I've encountered a lot of people who weren't WNBA fans, but when Kaylin Clark showed up, like you said, they appreciated her game. They were drawn to her game. So there are more eyeballs now on the league, which the league has said it's wanted for what 27 years. Right. Um and so why, why are they not capitalizing on this moment? Again, you hit me, you, you, you stomping me with these, these, these because I, I don't know. I mean, I, like, like some people you know? say, like, like, like Charles Barkley, for example, he's like, these girls are just jealous and petty, you know, and other people are like, oh no, they need to stop saying that. They, I mean, is that, do you think it really, they're just jealous and petty? Do you think race plays a factor? We've talked about people have talked about that. Like, what the what's that? What the heck? Like, this girl is bringing more money. She's bringing more eyeballs, and yet, a lot of people are saying what you're saying that that there's something going on that's not right. Yeah, I mean, Christy sides. Uh, it's a real long story. I think. I think I'm gonna have to actually sit down and mm -hmm. probably do a whole hour breakdown mm -hmm. on it like it is because if i just say a little that's why i'm hesitant because a lot of people don't get it mm -hmm. i don't think they get it and, and mm -hmm. what what the industry is and what they don't care about your celebrity people are really really frustrated and i'm starting to see some frustration from caitlin clark too i'm gonna ask you what i asked in that live a lot of us are frustrated i got a message from someone who said I'm so glad I found your work. I'm I'm glad I found your content, but I'm out of here. Until this until they get serious about winning, I'm done. And that by serious, this person meant firing coach sides. You know, I'm I'm out of here. And so that's kind of, that's that's kind of sad, you know, I I think. Caitlin Clark just said in a post-game interview after the Seattle game, nobody gives me advice I wish, which is kind of interesting. Right. What kind of advice? I wish. Uh, yeah, are, are we are we expecting too much from this team? These people are bailing. Are we expecting too much too soon? Uh, no, we're not expecting too much too soon. We're expecting just, you know, regular competence. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. just, you know, <laughs> to me, they just incompetent about the whole thing. But it's on purpose. And that's what I, I, I'll be trying to hit home, that it's obvious that it's on purpose. It's not the all these people on this high up, don't know what they're doing all of a sudden with a star. Mm -hmm. Even if the WNBA hasn't had a star like Kaylin Clark before, they, they the NBA has had it for years. Mm -hmm. You know, they know how to deal with stars and how things go, and they subsidize in that league. So it's nothing that they couldn't tell the WNBA what to do to handle mm -hmm. this the proper way and to capitalize off of it. Mm -hmm. But they're doing the opposite, mm -hmm. right? They're trying to destroy because – I even feel like that. I feel like I'm done with it. I'm, uh, uh, you know, the whole watching every game and going live, I'm almost done with the Kaylin Clark content all together myself because that's how they making it though. They make it to where 
people will tune out. Mm. And because the rich get richer, poor get poor. Them rich people at the top don't care nothing about no Kayla Clark and what kind of money she bringing. She ain't making them no more money. Not mm. them. She might make the, the ones under them more money, mm -hmm. the players more money, but them owners and all that, yeah, money is money to billionaires. It's not It's not really a big deal. They're going to be billionaires with Kaylee Clark or without Kaylee Clark. So if she not pushing their agenda or doing the necessary things they feel is necessary for mm -hmm. them to really, you know, like the big three or not the big three, but the unrivaled league, the, the three on three yeah. league. Yeah. I believe when she turned that down, uh, that that's when, that's when they knew. Okay, we're gonna sabotage her. We we gonna make sure she doesn't look, you know, as good as she actually is. We gonna we gonna make sure that the refs lay off the whistle uh, when people are guarding her. Which Caitlin Clark she brought that up that people get different type of calls and treatment when it comes to that, and so. Yeah, there's a lot of things lining up. So I can't wait to actually put together all the things that's been lining up since the very beginning of preseason yeah. until now. Does she does she have what it takes to succeed in this league skill-wise? Oh, yeah, most definitely. The league is trash. The WNBA talent is horrible. I, it's like you got a few here and there, and I'm going to be frank about it. No, it's, it's trash. It's hard to watch. Uh point like these girls I don't get it I really don't get how they're so bad at basketball with the IQ of knowing rotations just a lot of things and so I don't know how this league is even sticking around I see why nobody's been watching it and now they're trying to water Caitlin Clark's down uh, uh her game down to be on their level and it, it's it's hard to watch I'm almost tapped out of it myself I can't even <laughs> Wow. So I, I'm going to get back to a question that I asked and then I cut myself off with it. What kind of advice could you give someone? You're, you're saying that she's got incredible talent. She drew you in to watch and we know she's drawn other people in and yet there's frustration. The team is losing. Um, what kind of advice could you give someone who says nobody's giving me any advice? Oh, it's, it's time to vacate the premises. Save your soul. Save yourself. <laughs> Forget the fame. That dream is gone. They don't no. want you there. It's evil. Listen, the dream is over. It's gone. It's 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 not. It doesn't match up with her morals. Her it doesn't match up with her. She's not for this this league. She's not for this industry. She needs to go and either start her own league or go overseas. But it, it, unless you selling your soul, unless she's gonna sell her soul to these people. Her dream is over with a plan of being smooth in the WNBA. That's how I feel. She needs to, she needs to vacate premises. So you would suggest that she walk away from her dream or just walk. go overseas or do Yeah, her walk away from the WNBA. See, that's another thing, too. We get bent on something that they get, like, as if that's the only place to play basketball is the NBA or the WNBA to so get paid for it. You're getting these girls that's in the WNBA, they got to go overseas to play mm -hmm. anyways because they're not making enough money. So that league is trash. So mm -hmm. it's like, okay, well, forget that league. If they're going to treat you and that's what you got to do, these type of things, you got to compromise who you are in order for you to them to accept you, then no, you get on. You, you save your soul and you get on and go play elsewhere, especially when she has the following she has. Everybody's going to follow along suit right with her, you know. Mm -hmm. So, so let's just assume she won't take that piece of advice and she stays. Yes, and, she will. Okay. And so let's think about the on court stuff, the coach stuff. What is going on and what should she do differently? Um, expose them. Now is the time where she needs to start exposing. Them. She needs to go ahead and tell it like it is, what's really going on. And, and that's, you know, you know, that's what it, she needs to do all the way around the board. She needs to tell her what it is, like it is. About so these you, you, you be, you, you depot, be frank. You be frank. I talked in general. What is, what is going on? What are you, what are you seeing? Um, I see sabotaging. I see them not wanting to shine. I would tell them, look, my coach don't know what she's doing. Mm -hmm. My teammates is hating on me. 
-hmm. You know, it's 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 a dysfunctional locker room in this whole thing. It's a dysfunctional league. Like the last game she just played, what? She threw a full court pass, uh, Storm called a timeout, and the girl go into her and check her with her shoulder. Mm. Like, so you it what like what is this? Are we on a prison yard? Do she gotta mm. punch somebody out? And, okay. and so when it comes to this. It's like, okay, you see, everybody is against you. You got the U.S. Olympic coach constantly making comments. You got the defending championship coach making crazy comments. You got the MVP mm -hmm. making comments. You got Rihanna Stewart, Rihanna Tur the face of the – you got the whole league against you. So they can't be good for your psyche. So at this point, you got to just tell the people, especially since you have the people's ear, you have everybody's ear. Right, mm -hmm. you have the attention. So let let the people know because we already see it. And mm -hmm. instead of them being confused, and, she, and you know, and but I I understand though she might be confused by it too. This is new to her. She she never thought nothing like this would ever happen. Mm -hmm. And you know, even though they're saying that she's struggling, she's doing quite well. You know, she's leading in in various categories, and that is in spite of the team she's on, in spite of the pressure that she carries, she's still doing her thing. Um, her coach just said after the Seattle game, I want to see Caitlin take 15 shots a game. She's not taking enough shots, she said. What say you? Oh, yeah, I mean, we, we know that's bogus. You know, we know you got to call the plays. You got to run the plays for us. We know <laughs> you got to tell the team, this is what we're doing. Mm -hmm. and, and we know that's a whole coaching thing. So for her to say that, uh, yeah, she should be taking 15. What do you mean she should be? How about you run the plays for her to take them? <laughs> that makes no sense, right? So she just she just says things that don't make no sense. So if it don't make no sense, it's not the truth. She already knew she was going to get asked that. Now, like I told people, Everything I've been saying for real is all lining up. Mm -hmm. When I said from the beginning, all of it's been lining up from the why they hated on her when the big three or the unrivaled league, not the big three, not the big three, the unrivaled league, the women's three right. on three. Right, right. From why it come from top to bottom, because the NBA is supporting it, the WNBA is supporting it, the, the women there, they all want Kaylin Clark to jump aboard because if she's not along for that ride, it will not succeed. Mm -hmm. Okay, and they know this. They can't get the TV deals that they would like to get and so on and so forth. So it's bigger. It's basically, they look at that as her saying no to us or growing the women's game or doing whatever. She just wants to play 5-on-5 five five in the WNBA. Mm -hmm. They said, no, we want to do. Okay, so you don't want to do what we need you to do? We'll make sure you don't look as good as you really are. We'll try everything in our power to make sure you don't look as good like that. So when you're not on this list, for that three-on-three -three league, and we go to these networks, we can say, look, she wasn't even top 20. She wasn't even like this, like that. While y'all asking for her, we got girls that had better seasons than Kaylin Clark. So that really what it all boiled down to, if you wanted to just to nip it in the butt, and it's do everything we can to, to knock her down. And so mm -hmm. that's why I made my song. They try, to, they try to, you know, knock her down, but she keep getting back up. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I want to, and I want to talk about, I want to talk about your song now you're, but before I do, you're, you're assuming that they asked her to be in this new league. That's about to launch the three on three league, Brianna Stewart's Nafisa Collier. You're, you're assuming that they asked her and she said, no, is that right? No assumptions, Mrs. Ross. They offered her for sure. It's no way you even thinking about this. The only reason why they thought of that league. It's because they knew she was coming. Mm -hmm. They knew it was the time. So they mm -hmm. thought of it two years ago when she was a junior. And she was making all the noise she started making. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. So they, they that's when they, they they started getting it together. So no, no doubt in my mind, that's why they made the schedule they made for starting out. Is we're going to make sure you don't look like that. Like how everybody think you are and you're going to come into the league. And what Diana Taurasi said it was an underline, like she already knew. Uh, what she said, she's going to have a rude awakening mm -hmm. when she comes to this league. 
Yeah. And Kaylin even said, they, they said, did you think it'd be like this? She said, yep. Because <laughs> I don't, uh, to be honest, to be frank, why would she not go back to school for a fifth year? Why, why would she not? I believe it was a forced issue to come out. It was almost like you need, you got to come out. We need you now. This is this. We got this. And she probably went against what she really wanted to do and, and did it. Because at first, very early, it was talks that she did not want to go to fever. She didn't, if they was going to get the number one pick, she was going to go back to college. Mm. That was the talk early on in the beginning of her senior season. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, but then it flipped. And it was like, oh, well, now they're, they're so close to me. So, yes, that's great. It's close to Iowa. It's only a couple of hours where I'm from. That flipped. That, yeah, yeah. She changed yeah. how she was feeling about that. Well, and, her boyfriend, and her boyfriend is there. That's there. Yeah. That. yeah. Oh, but when, it, but, but see, how long has he been there? I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure. I didn't well, know he well, was Pacers. Well, I, I believe that we'll see. Let's see. Let's, let's check that out. Mm -hmm. Because if that's a good guideline you can get yourself. That's yeah. a good guideline. Uh, I don't even know this kid's name. But yeah. that would be Clark, interesting if he, got that job, if he got that job her senior year. Mm -hmm. If they if they offered him or whatever it was her senior year to make her switch that when she said, I don't want to be going to the fever if they get the first pick mm -hmm. they hired a boyfriend. I'll, probably, I'll, I'll be willing to bet that they probably hired him then. <laughs> Strategic. Oh, you're yeah. going to come. You're going to come out. And you're coming to Indiana, which we're going to give you an unexperienced head coach because we can't have an experienced coach uh, take the fall and do all the, you know, every all of the fire that's getting thrown Christy Sides way. We can't take an experienced coach with a resume and have you have them looking like that. And allowing Caitlin Clark to, you know, so we okay. can take a, yeah, we could take Christy Sides, who is a career assistant coach, 15 plus seasons on losing teams the whole 15 years mm -hmm. as an assistant. Mm -hmm. We can give her Caitlin Clark. Mm -hmm. What? Mm -hmm. Now, the owners of the Indiana Fever are the same owners who runs the Indiana Pacers. Right. The Indiana Pacers are a well ran franchise. Mm -hmm. So you know what they're doing. They've been well ran. They haven't won championships, but they're always relevant. They always mm -hmm. going. They always picking up good players. When Reggie Miller and Smiths and Davis mm -hmm. and the players they had, Mark Jackson. Then mm -hmm. once they got old, they got Reggie Miller, Jalen Rose, Jermaine O'Neal, Ron Artest. They mm -hmm. know what they're doing. Right. So to, for them to have a fever, be so garbage for the last couple years getting the back-to-back -back number one picks i i think maybe they i think maybe they thought she was going to single-handedly be able to to turn everything around i i thought that maybe they thought hey because i mean that was what i heard like oh my goodness clark and boston together it's gonna be amazing her and Leah boston and then I saw Leah Boston play. And I was like, this was the rookie of the year, the first, you know. But I think maybe she came in. Um, I think maybe she came in out of shape and, you know, yeah, whatever. But it didn't look like I was expecting. And maybe that was the case for them too. I don't know. I mean, I know you think something more sinister is going on. And uh, you know, I don't know. Yeah. I, I look forward to hearing you break that down at some point, you know. Do they make the playoffs? Guardians of Liberty always has fascinating speakers to engage, educate, and empower you. They meet on Tuesdays at 5 o'clock p.m. at Delmonico's in Jackson and are currently on their summer schedule. The next meeting will be July 23rd. The speaker will be Bill Federer. Yes, the nationally known speaker, best-selling author, and amazing historian. I can tell you from experience. He will be there talking about silence equals consent, the sin of omission. After that, the next meeting will be August 13th at 5 o'clock p.m. Delmonico's in Jackson, Guardians of Liberty, proclaiming liberty throughout all the land. <laughs>
DL Transmissions is the area's premier transmission repair facility. They offer a free transmission inspection. If you think your vehicle is not working right, call them today at 573-334-8726 or stop by their shop at 783 South Kings Highway in Cape. You can enjoy their clean, comfortable waiting area while they look at your vehicle. DL Transmissions is your best choice for quality transmission repair, hands down. Do they make the playoffs? No. no. They don't make the playoffs. And if they don't fire Christy Sides after, I think their last game is uh, the 30th, uh, before the break, before okay. the, I believe. I I'll I'll be I'm not sure for exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think they come back in August. Mm -hmm. I, I got to double check that, but uh, I know they get ready for their break. If Christy size not fired before that break or after or during that break, mm -hmm. then yeah, it, it's it's plain to see because you don't keep a a coach that the whole everybody's yeah. asking for her to be fired and rightfully so. It's not like she has a good resume yeah. already. It's mm -hmm. not like she's showing you anything to, for you to keep her. It's not like she has a bond with Kaylee Clark. It's the opposite. She actually doesn't have a bond with Kaylee Clark, the the franchise uh, star of your of your of your franchise. So, you know, if they keep her, it shows you she's a company man. She's doing what they want her to do. <laughs> That's and you know that. This is what I was even saying about the referees. I'm like referees in the WNBA. They're not top notch paid. Right. They're not like the D1 colleges and the NBA, so on and so forth, referees. So they don't have time to be not making certain proper calls to where they might not get a, a call back to, you know, for another job. They want to try to elevate and go up to the NBA. Mm. You know, they want to be around with March Madness and be referees. Right. When right. that happened, those paychecks are coming around. So mm -hmm. you want to have good film of you refereeing because that they get under under you know when they go out for jobs and they want to do thing yeah yeah i don't think they will risk missing all of these calls mm. and, and if the league wasn't allowing it mm. their job would be on the line mm -hmm. <laughs> you got I, I i'm waiting for you to break this whole thing down you need to write i'm waiting for the book to come out exposing stuff <laughs> Because <laughs> you you know there's a whole operation going on, you know. Yeah. All right. So, so who's the, who's rookie of the year right right now? It's early still, but oh, I mean, of course it's CC. You know, it's CC, and and it's uh, it's not even close in my book. You know, mm -hmm. I know some people will say Angel Reese. Yeah, and they're saying it more. They're saying it more and more now after that after the game when they just lost by one point. Yeah, yeah, her double doubles. So yeah, her double doubles uh nine consecutive, mm -hmm. which again it tells me how bad the WNBA has been throughout the years. If no rookie has ever had 10 and 10 mm. 10 times in a row, that tells me you guys are back. <laughs> that's a, that, that's well, not she, you know, she's no, she's number two among all players in rebounds. Right. Uh, Asia Wilson is one uh -huh. at the time of this recording, and Angel Reese is, is two. But we know some of Angel Reese's rebounds come from missing Tom, shots. You've been you been modest. <laughs> she's doing a lot. She's she she is improving. Uh, but but yeah, she misses a lot, and and she gets you know it takes a nose for the ball to get the rebound even on a miss. She but does. That's, she, that's she got a yeah, that's certainly not how I want to get a double double. I don't want to be missing shots, you know, for sure. So uh some people are saying that now it's definitely injuries. I agree with you. I, I don't think it's I don't think Angel Reese is um I'd give it to Caitlin Clark. Of course, Cheryl Swoops would disagree with me. But uh but yeah. Um, the the when everybody's geared to guard you and stop you and you still putting up better numbers. I mean, when you top 20 in all five categories, uh, stat-wise, points, assists, rebounds, uh, uh, steals, blocks, yeah. she's top 20 in, in every category. How many yeah. women is it in the WNBA? Over 140-something? 144, yeah. 140, so top 20 in all five categories. Yeah, it's amazing. That's amazing. Number three in assists, number two or number three in assists. Uh, 
then that can go up a little higher. So, yeah, I agree. I agree with you. I, I, I absolutely agree with you. All right. So you mentioned your song and I did want to talk about that. You just dropped some mm. some lyrics on us. And it has to do with Caitlin Clark. I want to let you tell us about uh, about your your song. Oh yes, thank you. Uh, CC twenty two by the Pope is out on all streaming platforms: Amazon Music, YouTube Music, Spotify, Apple Music. Uh, please go download it, like it, share it. Uh, yeah, but it came about. You know, with all the hate and, and, and animosity she gets towards everybody. So I had to kind of be like Big Brother and come to her rescue with the lyrics I've been putting down and, and, and to her defense on that one. So I kind of like spoke as I'm Caitlin Clark, uh, like what she would really say if she was being frank about what's going on. Uh, you know. I want you to hear some of this new song by DePope, CC. 22. I'm going to throw you right in the middle somewhere. You'll want to hear the beginning, middle, and end, so make sure you download. I'm calling it now. This is a hit. Step back, take boot, or I'm strapped up. Try to knock me down, but I get back up. Try to double team the green, best call for backup. Strong to the rack, but then I back up. Step back, take boot, or I'm strapped up. Take a shot at me, must have missed your mark. I shoot it from the deep, like I'm Caitlin Clark. Why they hate on me, must have a racist heart. We taking off, but Caitlin Clark. See why a different way out of your range Think it's hype cause she white must be highly deranged Strange how the game try to downplay greatness Put me in the game, coach the Pope be on his frank shit Y'all flying charters, she flying spaceships She sell out arenas, you sell out basements Who cares you MVP, your game is basics Better off hitting balls, running bases Killing the Joker to all you oasis DT the face of the league, it need a facelift Ancient old news, don't make me open old wounds in my ooze, out shrill swoops. Rebecca Lobo, hating up on the low low. Taking shots from the block, but not from the logo. Bro, Bruno, no promo and no homo. She grew the league by herself, solo dolo. Marco Polo, bitch, up out of water. Now, by the hands of Tinny the Tin Carter. The shit started, little bitch, call Mr. Bitch Warmer. They done woke up a monster, go a bit harder. Taking shots at me, must have missed your mark. I shoot it from the deep like I'm Caitlin Clark. Why they hate on me, must have a racist heart. We take it so yeah it, it's pretty dope song uh make sure y'all go check it out and, and, and you know cc22 cc22 yes and i have to tell you it is it's it's deep it's deep i feel like i need to be looking at those lyrics because you dropping in you dropping in some stuff and some subtle stuff in there also <laughs> that you yeah gotta yeah catch, you yeah know? we got we got some disses in there uh you know because the ones that be dissing to the ones that be dissing Kaylin Clark know mm -hmm. that yeah yeah the Pope is on you and and, and you got some you got some heat <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, yeah yeah and what else do you have coming down the pike as far as uh, with that music and you know merch and all this other stuff what you got yeah we got the Kaylin Clark t-shirts is coming up with the video to the song uh the visual and her highlights and everything like that uh, mm -hmm. to the song Kaylin Clark t-shirts that it be coming up here very soon. Uh, video is, is is already made. T-shirts is getting made. So y'all stay on the lookout for that as well. Yeah, absolutely. That's wonderful. And congratulations, by the way, on that. So so we listen. We need Caitlin Clark to stay in the WNBA. She can't be leaving. And you dropping your well, you know, you dropping your music. We need her. She in go there. overseas. She, she go, go overseas. overseas. Yeah, you, yeah. You, you you'll drop something for the overseas team. She's on right. <laughs> There we go. There we go. And I'm going to have something coming up for Juju Watkins as well. Because Juju is another one I'm I, I, I following and, and, and rocking with. So make sure y'all look. That uh, USC is is uh, going to probably most likely win a championship this year. Uh, I got there ahead. I got Juju winning player of the year mm -hmm. and national player of the year her, her sophomore season. Mm -hmm. So then my predictions on that. So I'll be following out that closely and see how they do. And also, uh, Deion Sanders, Colorado Bucks, will be, will be getting into that. You know, see how they do. I, I, uh, I don't think they're gonna do too well. You know, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a circus show over there uh, with them. So mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I have to call that out too. You yeah. know. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, you, you know, the Pope be frank. So <laughs> you be frank. 
right? <laughs> All right. Well, listen, I, I'm going to hang in there with the Indiana fever. And uh, and I hope things turn around. I, I, I feel like there's some tension in the in the locker room also. Maybe some new tension even from the post game I saw after Seattle. And uh, I was just her and Aaliyah at the table. It just, it just felt real tense, you know. But I'm going to hang in there. I'm going to hang in there. I'm going to hang in there. I think you are too. I know you say you're frustrated, but I think I think you're going to stay in there. <laughs> hang in there. And uh, so anyway, and also your, your YouTube channel. Tell us about your YouTube channel. Uh, yeah, it's the Pope Be Frank, uh, my YouTube channel. Um, I mean, like, like you said, be frank about all situations. So y'all stay right. tuned for that. And I got Studio 5 uh, Network going on with my guy, G5. So y'all make sure y'all look out for that in that Studio 5 with the 5 IVE. Uh, but, yeah, that's coming about. And, and so that's going to be good. We, we covering a lot of topics from mental health to lifestyles to, you know, uh, industry, just industry topics. Some like how Caitlin Clark uh, is facing the, 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 the powers that be. The, right. the goodness versus the evil. So, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. well, good. Good. I wish you well on everything you're doing and God's blessings. And you and I are hoping to to do some more stuff together, which would be kind of cool. Some YouTube lives and everything. So make sure you go to Depot Be Frank on YouTube and subscribe to his channel. Check it out. He does a lot of lives, does a lot of videos, has a lot of insight, and has a lot of people who are following him and are looking to hear what he has to say about the various things surrounding um, Caitlin Clark and then obviously some other things that you're going to have going on. So thank you so much for being on the show. I really appreciate it. No problem. Thank you for having me. All and right. Keep, God on, keep growing. All right. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you too. Shout out to Kenny Burns and the BMG Network, of which I am a part. We are a group of podcasters who are engaging, enlightening, informative, and yes, entertaining. So go to the bmgnetwork.com. Also, if you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, go subscribe. We have hit over 10,000 subscribers. We're growing. Love for you to be a part of it. So make sure you subscribe, like, share, all the good stuff. And also, I'm on Substack, adrianross.substack.com. That's where my writing is, in addition to my podcast. And go to the podcast platforms and subscribe there as well.